Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Blue Tron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. So those of you who tuned into my ninja stream know I had a little trouble with the build, but fret not, now free of the build I was playing, I have zeroed in on something playable, and it doubles as evidence that the conventional wisdom about Goki bands might be a little misguided. So with that, I present to you Extra Link Ninjas. So here's the list, and oh god, there's a lot here you probably recognize. As always, I'll give you a little bit of background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Ninja is a deck with a whole lot of cards, maybe two of which are playable. Those two, Ninja Grandmaster Hanzo and Upstart Golden Ninja, have always been skirting the edges of playability, waiting for some poor sucker to forget they exist, waiting for the perfect time to strike fear into the hearts of the meta like some sort of stealthy assassin person, I'm sure there's a better word for this. Unfortunately, these monsters do not an archetype make, and as a result they've been relegated to mediocre Simorg Turbo builds that have to go first or die on the back of their really mediocre ninjutsu arts and anti-spell fragrance. Until now! Thanks to some... Super exciting support. Ninjutsu arts are now extremely easy to find, and as it turns out, that's a problem. As we all know, there's a particularly egregious dingus in the format that enables some ridiculous extra link combos, Firewall Dragon, and the presence of Goki in the format isn't due to their particular power, but the fact that they add a card to your hand when they go to the graveyard. They also have a tribal soul charge, which makes matters worse. Hilariously, Ninja also fits this bill. Hanzo isn't once per turn, so it's not particularly difficult to add four or five cards to your hand with his effect over the course of the game, and they have a tribal soul charge in Twilight Ninja Getsuka the Shogun. The only other potential combo piece the deck was missing was a combo starter, but Twilight Ninja Jogen has the ability to special summon itself, provided you have a ninja art in your hand, and terraforming can search the new one. It's also level 7, just like Tomahawk. Some of you mermail players may know where I'm going with this. So with that, let's get into the card by card. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time explaining a game plan that effectively amounts to make a U-board and gumble a couple of times. So here we go. One copy of Twilight Ninja Getsuga, three copies of Twilight Ninja Jogen, three copies of the big man himself, Ninja Grandmaster Hanzo, and two armed ninja. If you're greedy, you can play an additional armed ninja to extend your best case scenario combo by two extra gumblar cards, but I never plan for perfection. And then some classic Goki enablers. Three copies of Marauding Captain, which is great with Hanzo, three Junk Warrior, and and three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Now this slot can be taken up by Called by the Grave post board, but I like Ash here because one, there's a link in the combo where we need a monster in hand before Firewall adds from Grave, and two, occasionally you have to make Invoker. Finally, we've got Ebly. After that are the Striker cards. The Hornet tokens a warrior after all, so three Engage and three Bit, followed by five Garnets. Moon Mirror, Phoenix, Unicorn, Ardifidur, and Deep Seated, since we need to summon a level 4 monster off of a Solda's effect. Three copies of Terraforming, three copies of Ninjutsu Art Village, one Alchemy, and one Notebook. Last but not least, our game-winning one-ofs, Rota and Soul Charge. But not in that order. In the extra, we need all of this but Invoker. Tomahawk, Invoker, Gumblar, Firewall, Summon Sork, Trigate, Nightmare Unicorn, Phoenix, Cerberus, Double Gabo, Double Mermaid, Isolde, and Link Haribo. So instead of jumping into the games, I'll first give you a quick combo tutorial for both a worst case scenario board and a large combo. Let's check them out! The differences in combo boards are extremely subtle but extremely important. This represents one of the worst case combo boards. We don't have access to Hanzo or multiple ninjas, but we do have access to a ninjutsu art and a way of making a solda. The deck is extremely adept at making this hand. Let's see how we execute this basic combo. The first thing we're going to do is cycle as much as possible, adding a copy of Hornet Bit to our hand alongside the ninjutsu art field spell. We'll then Hornet Bit for a token, normal summon marauding captain, equip an equip spell for maximum as solda efficiency, and then add a copy of Junk Forward to hand, sending four from deck to graveyard to get ourselves a Hanzo. Hanzo will activate, getting us a Jogan to hand before going into Summon Sorceress, special summoning a Jogan, and using its effect to get another Jogan from deck. We'll then overlay into Tomahawk and fill our entire board with tokens. From here, the fun begins. The first thing we're going to do is Link Summon a Nightmare Goblin, not using its effect, then a Firewall Dragon and a Mermaid. We'll use Mermaid's effect, discarding a Junk Forward for a copy of Ebly. We'll add this copy of Phoenix Blade back to our hand before going into a second copy of Goblin and Firewalling into Firewall, returning a Hanzo and an Ebly to our hand, then using 
using Hanzo to get a Shogun. We'll then go into a Phoenix, use Firewall's effect to get Shogun to our side of the board, and Unicorn to free up zones to get back Hanzo and Jogan from Graveyard. We'll use Hanzo again to get an Arm Ninja, go into a Nightmare Cerberus, get Ebly to go into Gumblar Dragon, use Ebly's effect and Firewall's to get a copy of Arm Ninja to our side of the board, which of course triggers Gumblar Dragon and makes our opponent discard two. We can add one of those back to hand before going into Link Haribo and passing it back. So this is a pretty formidable board and hard to out. Having said that, if you open Hanzo, your playmaking potential increases exponentially. Here's what I'm talking about. The first thing we're going to do is special summon a Junk Forward before normal summoning a Grandmaster Hanzo to add a Ninjutsu Art to our hand. We'll equip a couple of equip spells. This is effectively a three card hand, and we're still going to go incredibly wide. We'll start by adding a Junk Forward off of this copy of the Solda once again, then milling four so we can get ourselves a Hanzo. Hanzo's effect will trigger getting a Shogun, then we'll go into Summon Sorceress, special summoning a Jogan. We'll then use Summon Sorceress's effect for a second Jogan before we go into Galaxy Tomahawk. We'll We'll use that effect to fill our board with tokens once again. The beginning parts of this combo are always the same before going into a Nightmare Goblin, a Firewall Dragon, and a Mermaid. We'll trigger Mermaid's effect the same way as last time, then use the Grave Effect of Phoenix Blade before going into a Goblin, using Firewall Dragon, chaining to Firewall Dragon to get a Hanzo and an Ebly backdoor hand, special summoning the Hanzo so we can add an Arm Ninja to our hand, and then going into a Nightmare Phoenix. Afterwards, we'll get the Shogun and the Unicorn so we can get back this time two copies of Hanzo, adding two cards from our deck to our hand. We're going to pick an Armed Ninja, and what do you know, our last Jogun. We'll go into a Trigate Wizard this time, then going into Ebly for a copy of Mermaid. We will trigger both Ebly and Firewall Dragon so we can get ourselves a copy of Arm Ninja, going into a Link Rebo, special summoning a Jogun, going into Cerberus, getting an Arm Ninja for a Gumblar Dragon, and here's where we would use another Arm Ninja if we were extremely greedy to loop our opponent again. Regardless, this is an extremely powerful board which is almost impossible to out. With that in mind, let's check out some games. Our first match is up against Paleozoic, an extremely powerful deck that is unfortunately well known for not playing too many hand traps. Let's see if they can break our board. The first thing we're going to do is start up Engage for Hornet Pit, then add a Ninjutsu Art to our hand before activating Hornet Pit, normal summoning Marauding Captain, going into Isolde. Isolde will trigger, getting a Junk Forward to our hand, then binning four equip spells for a Hanzo to our side of the field. We'll add a copy of Jogan number two, then we'll special summon it off of this Summon Sorceress, get our last one from deck, and go into Galaxy Tomahawk. This time in defense position. We always want to shake things up. We'll fill our board with tokens before going into a copy of Nightmare Goblin, a copy of Firewall Dragon, and a copy of Nightmare Mermaid. We'll get an Ebly from deck. Afterwards, we're going to return Phoenix Blade to our hand, then go into Nightmare Goblin number two, Firewall into Firewall. Thank God we have fodder in our hand. And finally, special summoning a Hanzo so we can add an Arm Ninja to our hand. We're going to go into a Nightmare Phoenix, special summoning the Shogun, go into Unicorn to free up spaces, then get ourselves a copy of Jogan and Hanzo from our graveyard. We'll add another Arm Ninja, go into Cerberus, special summon an Ebly for a Nightmare Mermaid, use Ebly's effect, Firewall Dragon's effect, and now we can go into Gumblar. So this is pretty frightening. We've discarded two cards from our opponent's hand. Let's see what they can do with the remainder, one of which is Swap Frog. They'll go ahead and activate that now, sending a Ronin Totem, return it to hand, set two, and pass. Unfortunately, the Torrential Tribute is potentially an out, but the Nightmare Cerberus uh, prevents it from really doing anything. Our opponent's going to flip up a Heavy Storm Duster, so we can't get over their 0-0 zero, zero creature, but thankfully we still have enough on board to facilitate lethal. Our second match is up against Spiral. We're going first once again, and... <gasps> what is that, a hand trap? Now, thankfully, it's not a particularly powerful one. We should be able to play through it. We're going to start by activating this copy of Terraforming to get a copy of Ninjutsu Arc to our hand before activating Engage for a Hornet Pit. These, of course, can activate on the same chain. Funny how that works out. And then we can make a Solda without burning our normal summon. We'll do just that and then get a Junk Forward to our hand before sending four to the graveyard to get ourselves a Hanzo. Hanzo will trigger, getting Jogan. We'll then go into Summon Sorceress, Special Summon Jogan. Use Summon Sorceress's effect to get another Jogan and go into Galaxy Tomahawk. If nothing else, the deck is consistent consistent, if not a little bit boring. We'll then go into a copy of Goblin, a copy of Firewall Dragon, and a Mermaid, using Mermaid's effect, sending the four to Graveyard to get Ebly, then using the Grave effect of Phoenix Blade to return it to the hand, getting a Goblin, using Firewall Dragon's effect, and then chaining two Firewall Dragon to add a Hanzo and an Ebly. We'll special the Hanzo for a copy of the Shogun, before going into a Nightmare Phoenix, special summoning the Shogun, freeing up a zone with a Unicorn, then getting two cards. <gasps> our Hanzo gone! I guess only one card from our Graveyard, going into Cerberus, using Firewall Dragon for Ebly, going into Mermaid, using Ebly and Firewall Dragon's effect to get the last monster out of our hand and go into Gumblar, after which we will activate it, sending two cards from our opponent's hand to the graveyard and allowing them to draw a <laughs> hand trap right on time. They'll then activate Spiral Resort, getting themselves a super agent, normal summoning a tough, targeting our Cerberus, missing, but I don't think it would have been destroyed anyway. They'll shuffle a card back into the deck, and we should be able to win from this position, especially with two cards in hand. We can deal 3,000 points with Gumblar before going to battle phase and beating over their wimpy monsters. Gumblar is one heck of a card. So this deck is certainly very Goki-esque. 
that said, our best of three versus meta is going to be against the great equalizer Hand Trap Invoked. This deck has a particular problem, like Goki, with multiple hand traps, as you'll see in these games. We've got a fantastic opener. We're going to start by activating Reinforcement of the Army to get an Ash Blossom out of our opponent's hand, I suppose. We'll then start up Engage for a copy of Hornet Bit. We'll use that and Normal Summon a Marauding Captain to go into Isolde. Use her effect to get... Oh... Ghost Ogre. Well, we'll add a Hanzo to hand and try again next turn. Our opponent draws into another Ghost Ogre, not exactly a linear play, and passes it back to us. We draw into another Junk Forward, similarly bad. We'll Normal Summon the Hanzo, and there's Ghost Ogre number two. At this point, we can at least get Alchemy, so we can set our Field Spell, draw two, and then find another Field Spell off of the Terraforming we draw. I don't equip Horn of the Unicorn, because why would I? I'll pass it back to my opponent. They'll activate Mind Control, taking my Junk Warrior, and then going into Alistair the Meltdown Invoker. This deals 1,800 points of damage to our life points, we draw into Artifure. Come on. Well, we'll pass it back and hope to draw something next turn. Our opponent finds a Terraforming, which means they are now off to the races. They'll Magical Meltdown for a copy of Aelister. Use Aelister's effect for an Invocation. Use Invocation to go into Macaba, and I'll concede. So it's time for game two, and oh boy, this hand is bad. Ugh. <sighs> an Artifier and a Phoenix Blade, any other equip spell and we would have been fine. This is also one of the very few hands the deck can produce that does not make Isolde. So on our turn, we're going to have to activate Startup Engage to give ourselves a Hornet Bit and pass it back. Let's hope for the best. Our opponent draws a copy of Terraforming, so they'll get a Magical Meltdown, then use Magical Meltdown to get themselves an Alistair. Normal Summon him, use this effect, we will Ash Blossom, we can't beat an Invocation. They'll set one, attack for a thousand, and pass it back to us. We draw in two... Okay, Jogan maybe does do it. We'll activate Hornet Bit, Special Summon Jogan by revealing an art, then go into Isolde. And there's Solemn Judgment. So, uh, now the writing's kind of on the wall. They're going to activate a second copy of Magical Meltdown, and I'm thinking, okay, here comes the Invocation. They'll get it off the Invoker, then go into a copy of Macaba, attack us for an inordinate amount of damage, uh, 3,500, I believe, before going into a copy of Aelister, the Meltdown Invoker in Main Phase 2, activating a second Invocation for a Macaba, using Aelister to get an Invocation from deck, and passing it back. We have lost, so time to BM a little bit. We'll go ahead and get a copy of Hidden Arts. They'll negate it with Macaba. That's not particularly nice and then we'll concede. So we're back with the deck. I had to go out of my way to find a best of three that wouldn't put you to sleep. I hope you appreciate the effort. This deck's good. And it's good in similar ways to Goki, obviously. Ignoring the Warriors, Invoker, and Sky Striker stuff would definitely be a mistake, but it's also got some important differences. One, it doesn't need Phoenix Blade. Phoenix Blade is a nice tool afforded to it, and it certainly helps with Gumblar loops, but absent it, it still adds several cards to the hand, more than enough to strip your opponents. Banning it does literally nothing to this version of Warrior U-Link. Two, it doesn't need Nightmare Goblin. This is another one I hear thrown around as a potential ban candidate, but the deck never actually activates its effect. Any Link to Nightmare and a Proxy Dragon would accomplish the same goal. Three, it doesn't need a rematch. Uh, obviously. Konami are just going to have to reckon with the fact that after decades of a card game that's treated the graveyard as a second hand and board building as a trivial setup tool every deck can access is going to be able to assemble similar combos to this one as long as Firewall is legal. When even something as innocuous as making an Ninjutsu art card slightly more searchable have this effect, maybe it's time to take action. So that's that. I'm happy I finally landed on a playable version of Ninjas, but I'm a little unsatisfied that it led to this. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every weekend, and if you have an idea for a certain deck or archetype you want me to check out on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll do my best. Otherwise, I'll see you Tuesday.